I'm so happy to be here with Alex King Harris, a soul brother. And, uh, you know, we, we met not too long ago, but like instantly I felt this connection and um, I'm just grateful that we've been able to work together in, in various uh, ways. Um, and Alex does this magical work of helping us release, um, yeah, release a lot of uh, stuff from our past, our, tra our trauma, our, our kind of stuckness through vocal journeys, through the voice. And I wanted Alex to talk about that because I think it's such a powerful uh, modality. And uh, um, you do beautiful work, Alex. I'm just going to stop for now because I want you to introduce yourself and tell us about your background and your work. And then we'll get into um, this idea of, of vocal work and how that affects us. Yeah. Great. Thanks, George. Uh, and thanks for this opportunity to chat. It has been a pleasure getting to know you. So it's nice to spend a bit more time together. Um, yeah. So my background was with a lot of musical training. I, I went to university for music after having a lot of great teachers before that in private um, studied jazz, classical, ethnic music, got a degree, went off and had an amazing career. But my career was really interwoven with yoga and mindfulness from the beginning. I was doing some personal healing from a really radical car accident where I'd had a lot, a lot of abdominal injury. And yoga and breath work and music kind of found their way together pretty early for me. My first yoga teacher was kind of this sonic wizard who had a cancer therapy program and he would use music to relax people and then teach them how to breathe. And so I studied with him and it really shifted my understanding of what music was for. And at that time I was meditating a lot. A lot of downloads were coming through about my path as a musician was not to be a performer. It was to help people feel like they were in the music with me and give them the power of their own musicality through breath and through sound. And so I had the wonderful privilege of making a lot of music for a lot of prominent yoga teachers and healing arts practitioners. I launched a company that streams music for those, that group of professionals and kind of built my whole career around music and embodiment, how to use music to get people in the body. What's the difference between music that's purely entertainment or distracting versus stuff that actually makes the breath want to go deeper and makes people want to feel themselves more deeply. And so that was my path. And yet I, even myself, uh, after experiencing su some success and dealing with some um, issues around addiction, I lost my connection to music entirely. It felt very formulaic, very repetitive. And it wasn't until I'd found the power of mindfulness techniques as they are now and music and got them joined back together that I experienced a complete reboot in my connection to music as a very devotional experience of presence. And that stopped me thinking about music and it turned me towards a lot of my unhealed wounds inside. And then I started sharing that work with others. And it's been a really profound journey of, of helping people to get beyond their own blocks or thoughts about what they think it is to be a singer and experience the joy of a choir in a very mindful, present kind of way. So that's what I do these wow. days. Yeah. Awesome. I let's, let's dive into this because there's so much uh, richness and power here and uh just one second here okay sorry about that we just we just had to change the camera for a sec so i i totally am with you on the power of like you said your musicality i love that because it's it's not like music people usually think especially singing people usually think oh you know performance um but it's so much more like like we don't have to perform to benefit from 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 singing and i um I don't know if I told you this, Alex, I, I was, I was part of, I, I, I think you knew about my musical background. I used to mm -hmm. lead a, lead a band at church mm -hmm. uh, singing and like leading worship and all that. It was such a profoundly um, like formative uh, and, and moving like for my, for my growth, you know, it was, it was mm -hmm. really foundational for me. Like my, mm -hmm. my spirituality, the way I express myself today is, is so much thanks to the power of, devotional singing which is what mm -hmm. you, you you do and help others learn and all that and mm -hmm. and then um at some point i actually joined a a black gospel choir yeah no way that's been a dream <laughs> so, of mine that's like, like a lifelong dream is to do that oh my god like yeah. it's and, and it, but actually it was a it was a class at at uc berkeley believe it or oh, not cool. like they had it, amazing it, so, so grateful that this person wow. you know this 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 black pastor like worship leader came in 
and mm-hmm. and did this. And most of my you know fellow choir members were black, and uh, but we had we had a very diverse diverse choir, and it was seriously it was some of the most amazing experiences of my life, um, mm-hmm. most like uplifting, truly connected the spirit I felt like like a unit and expressing ourselves like this. Not, mm-hmm. not, not all of us were good singers. Many of us weren't. Sure. Yeah, but sure. it was so so tell us what do you think is happening there? <laughs> yeah, wow, that's such a great a great question. So in when I studied jazz, we actually studied uh, the the tr- the what happened to music as black people were taken from Africa and brought to North America. And because of their suffering, music was the only thing they were allowed to do. One of the things was one of the only expressions of freedom. It somehow galvanized their connection to music in a way that created this uproar of reverence for what music is for them, right? And that, in a way, is why the gospel movement is so powerful, because you're jumping into the river of people who have really had everything taken from them. And the only thing left was their connection to music and each other through song and dance. And, you know, as Western folk who haven't been through that recently, our memory of when we used to sing and dance around the fire or in the village is quite long away. But there's some part of us that wants to belong again in a sense of communal worship, reverence, devotion of what music does to us, which is it gives us a sense of belonging. It gives us a sense that we're okay just the way we are. It allows us to feel uh, and enjoy the beauty of life. It's very celebratory, right? It allows us to move emotions like grief and sadness and pain and stress into a place of praise. And that is something that we all crave, even if we've never had it before. Um, It's something that we all need, you know? And so I think what's happened with the commodification of music is this sort of separated people, especially with the entertainer audience thing, which is great. It's nice to go see a show. It separated people away in a similar way that, that, that religion has of like the people with the power are the ones on the stage and everybody else is powerless, just kind of taking it in, you know, again, mad respect to great performers, but I think at this day and age, we all need to feel that power inside of ourselves and claim it and own it. And uh, be in a group of people where no matter what you believe, you can all do that together. And that's a really um, incredible experience as you as you as you found in that gospel choir. Totally. And you have led so many of these kinds of events over the years. Right. Mm -hmm. Like like. um, Yeah. Okay. so and later I'm going to I'm going to ask you to maybe lead us in a little bit of musical uh, musical experience as well. So that that will come up later. But um, (laughs) Talk, talk to us about so right now like in, in our current culture a lot of people are waking up to this idea of um trauma or uh you might say stored like pain painful experiences stored in the body and mm-hmm. in the in the psyche mm-hmm. and like we're finding different ways of healing that mm-hmm. do you think what role do you think music and the way, especially devotional singing and th- the way you're you're doing it and you're teaching it, guiding others on it, what role do you think that has in terms of our our, our healing? Mm-hmm. We could talk about trauma healing if we want, but mm-hmm. but particularly mm-hmm. the healing of um, all the pain that we we hold on to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure, yeah, that's great. So what I've noticed from my own exploration is that we have this amazing survival system that takes over when our when our when we're overwhelmed. And our brain has the capacity in a way to um, take us out of the pain through creating narratives around the pain that help us digest and understand what happened when we were overwhelmed. And it's it's amazing in what it does, but the trick is once it gets stored in the body, our brain tends to narrate about the pain and it, we get into this kind of stuck place where we're trying to protect ourselves from it. We want to let it go. Our brain's not sure how, you know, and it's a very potent and powerful thing to go back into some of those pains and actually feel them. And so what I've journeyed with, especially with doing really conscious rhythmic breathing and using my voice is that I can help that part of my mind that's still in survival mode from a traumatic experience, relax and open a little bit and trust that there's a way of letting this go that it doesn't have to solve as a problem. And so it's really just giving the body and the nervous system enough cues to relax and open. And I think the the other thing that comes from the devotional part of things is when you really feel yourself 
uh, held by life and you really commune with life and allow it allow yourself to trust in life again after something really really intense happened then this natural kind of unfolding of your instrument happens and in that you get to just experience pain as sensation not the story that's attached to the trauma but just the physical sensation itself and voice is a wonderful channel for getting it out so you can use that sensation to shape the sound that you're uh, that you're producing and as long as what I teach is to stay active in your listening so that your thoughts don't turn on and keep surrendering and softening the body, then inevitably this pain wants to release and come through. And then after that, we often have a, you know, a cathartic moment of healing and we feel more whole. And then our voice often changes in its sound to reflect that more uh, attuned state with your instrument. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it also makes me just think about that idea of how the universe is 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 song right like mm -hmm. universe like <laughs> it's it's there's some there's a there's a like like you're talking about this in 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 terms of the physicality or the physiology of it but there's also the connection and you know depends on one's belief but like there's a connection to the universal source yeah um you know frequency you might say right uh, and yeah. in, in doing all this. Um, well, and that just to yeah. complete that, that's a, that's perhaps a more fundamental level at which this magical way that music works is at work, where the pain and trauma that we experience in our lives is somehow, again, through personal experience, we're somehow predestined to go through a breaking of sorts and then learn how to come back into harmony and unity. And the universe, to me, has this this. Um, way of reminding us why we went through the experiences we did and bringing us back into wholeness when we tune into it. And music has a lovely metaphor for that of you're wanting to restore harmony and balance. And as you start to listen to the universe again and open up and work with that harmonizing effect, something happens that kind of brings you back to your original state and you get to learn from all of the moments of pain and suffering so that you can be of service to others and i think that's really a big part of our destiny as humans is to go through that wow. yeah nice i'm, yeah. I'm going to listen to this again because i think this i think part of what you're saying yes but also just your what your way of presenting it is mm -hmm. uh, is this healing i like that great um so i, I want to do a couple things we the mm -hmm. time is already coming to a close it's it's very yeah. fast but nice. i want to do a couple things one is i want you to describe a little bit of what you do when you lead a vocal journey like what what should we expect mm -hmm. um what what should we understand mm -hmm. you know like as right. we, we come into and one of your vocal journeys okay number yeah, one. Right. Yeah. and then number two maybe you could lead us a little bit mm -hmm. uh in that experience and then at the end we could talk about how people can actually you know sign up and experience uh an hour-long journey um with you so uh go ahead and share Great. Excellent. Thanks, George. So the first invitation is just to come as you are. There's no need to prepare. You don't need any skill. You need don't need any training. And I like to create a container where everybody feels really safe, included, welcome, and that there's a, an awareness of the tendency to feel really vulnerable as we express our voice, to create a, a, a capacity to be kind to that part of ourselves and be very self-accepting for whatever comes out. Um, now, I do that through mindfulness techniques, and the first thing that I'll teach is how to relax and open your ears so that you're not um, straining or stressing the, in the input of frequency that's going on around you. You're then learning to notice as your thoughts are active to just simply practice listening to life as you notice that you're thinking. And that does a really beautiful thing and then it makes you receptive to the music of the universe. Um, and then what I'll do is have you scan your body and start noticing where you're holding tension. Generally, as, as people preparing to sing, we start to get nervous. And so we hold tension in the jaw, in the tongue, in the throat, behind the eyes, across the forehead, down the back of the neck. Depending on our emotional state, we might have you know tension in the heart, in the belly, in the hips. And so we kind of do like what I call an instrument scan, where we bring softness and space into the instrument. And then we start breathing in a very connective and almost devotional way. And, and the breath becomes the central axis through which we access music. And anytime we're efforting and trying to be musical, we come back to these awareness tools. 
Um, and essentially there's the things that ground you back into the intelligence of music itself. Uh, the other thing that I'll have people do is something called a vocal sigh, which is really just like a nervous system, let go, reset, get some freedom going on, stop trying to sing, just let it out, that kind of thing. And then we make some simple sounds together. And when we sing, it'll just be melodies with usually with no lyrics. And that, again, creates a very inclusive, reverent space where people don't have to learn anything about the lyrics themselves. And so that part of their active mind can take a back seat and relax more. And then we sing our way into stillness and meditate for a while and just go back and forth along that path. Oh, it's beautiful. And when you do this, first of all, I know you've done lots of these things in person, but you've also done lots of these things virtually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And right. And it's like, so, so are people, are people revealing their own voice, like in terms of the virtual, like, are they, or are they not, not right? They're okay. not, they're muted. And, um, because I, I was kind of nervous about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's, well, what's really interesting is in that situation where you're in a regular kind of Zoom environment, you get this feeling of collectiveness, but you have a very personal relationship with your voice in that particular container. It's very different than doing it as a group where, yeah, right. where the resonance of all the other voices right. can help you open. Yes. And it can be a really interesting experience. Yeah. And then when you're private, you just have me in your headphones and right. you get to be completely free. Yeah. And both have value, I've found, yeah. in doing doing both. Right. People of, often get way more playful. Sometimes they'll turn off their cameras and rock out and yeah. just like, yeah. you know, go for it. Right. <laughs> and that's a very different behavior than what they do if they were sitting in a group of people. It's yeah. it's a different I mean, medicine. So It's really yeah. good. Well, yeah. uh, if you're willing uh, yeah. to give us, you know, a couple minutes of, of, of just a little sample so we can have a yeah. sense of what this is kind of like. Let's do it. Okay, so it seems like you're sitting comfortably. So I'll just yeah. get you to close your eyes. And I'll, I'll mute my mic. Yeah, mute yourself. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So just close your eyes and just turn your gaze inward. And notice how it feels in your body, this instrument, this beautiful gift from life. And as you're noticing... You can just let your jaw begin to soften and let the muscles around your ears start to relax and open. Let your tongue soften. And let the backs of your eyes melt. And as you become aware of your breath, just notice the sensation of breath moving in and out of the body, staying relaxed, inviting some space on the inhale. And on the exhale, just softening the body a little bit more. And so stay with the breath and allow it to deepen a little bit into the chest, into the belly. feeling down into your hips, letting your hips soften and open. And just feeling again the exquisiteness of this instrument that you have. And noticing if there's anywhere inside that needs attunement, perhaps part of your body where you might not feel any sensation or it might be tight. And using your listening and your breath to allow for spaciousness to open up. And then on the exhale, just softening your whole being. Letting whatever sounds are around you and inside you just be there. And then starting to allow your breath to become an act of devotion, that you're taking in this amazing energy of life, accepting it into your being and then giving it back, acceptance and surrender. 
feeling the connection with life through your breath. Sipping on the breath like it's the nectar. And then we're going to bring our voices into this beautiful instrument just with the simple act of sighing. So you're going to take a nice deep breath in. Ah, and just sigh your voice out and feel the texture of your voice as it touches your heart. Deep inhale. Ah, sigh on the exhale. Keeping the jaw soft and open, relaxing the body. Ah, another nice sigh. And then we're just going to make some really simple sounds together. You can just repeat after me. Yele. 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 Yelele. Yelele. Feeling your instrument. Yelele. 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 Nice deep breaths. Yelele. Hearing wide open. Yelele. A soft heart. Yelele. 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 Yelelele, 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 yelelele. Take a deep breath, last one, all the way in. Hold your breath in at the top. Draw the roots of your pelvis up. And exhale with one last big sigh. Ah. And just shake it out. That was awesome. Thank you so much for that gift. Um, You're welcome. I noticed you were using a, a, an egg egg, uh, egg shaker, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, with the Zoom settings, probably my on my side or something, I, I couldn't hear it. Um, so, so, but I, I bet in your... Uh, in your in your journeys you you know you'll set something up so yeah i have a different setup in my journeys i yeah. have a really high quality mic and there you go. interface and the shaker is <laughs> really clear and it's balanced with my oh, voice good. okay i think okay. what happens too is the mic on the laptop gets a little overloaded if i don't have the right zoom settings and it crunches yeah. it off yeah i'll all good um tell <laughs> us about how we could have more of this <laughs> yeah great so you can go to alexkingharris.com I offer periodic free one hour journeys. Um, they're usually around once a month, give or take, just an opportunity for people to come in at no charge. And um, Beautiful. yeah, that was one I just did with Unify. It was a world vocal journey for peace. Wow. Uh, and then once you try that, if you like it, and you want to go deeper. I have a six week deep dive course coming up in late May where we go yeah. really deep into this practice. And it's a really beautiful opportunity. And, and, to... and who, who's this person here? Um... That, that's me <laughs> <laughs> with a beard. Yeah, with a beard. With a beard. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. really, really great. I'm so grateful for you to, and you've got the podcast now, right? Yeah. Just launched the podcast. The first, first episodes coming out later this week with Jayu Tal, who's one of wow. the m- most amazing devotional singers I, I've ever met. And he and I are yeah. really great friends. It was wow. an amazing interview to learn about his life story and um, how he got to where he got. It's a wonderful story to, to hear. So that'll be coming out later amazing. this week. Who yeah. else? Who else are you going to have on the podcast? Uh, who uh, each other? Yeah, so we'll have Dave Stringer, who's a wonderful devotional artist. David Permal. Uh, I just interviewed this really great breathwork music producer named Toic. Mm. Um, we're going to have DJ Taz Rashid coming up later in the summer. Mm. Hopefully, Sanatam Kar uh, later yeah. this summer as well. The cool thing about Yogi Tunes is I have this amazing network of. I mean, we literally have most of the greatest devotional music on the planet on that service, and it's all through personal relationships. So, mm. this podcast is going to reflect a lot of those friendships that I have. Yeah, thank you. 
-hmm. So uh, those of you who are able to see the video on, on screen, you'll see that this is uh, as of this moment, but I'm sure you have additional offerings coming up. The yeah, deep dive sessions the are coming up. Um, totally. Two and a half hour voice and breath journeys. Amazing. People go really deep in those mm -hmm. and it's powerful. Awesome. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Alex. Yeah, you're welcome, George. Thanks yeah. for uh, shining your light in the world too. Really appreciate you. <laughs> Please folks comment below if you like. Um, how was that experience for you? Do you have any questions for Alex um, and just any other reflections on this idea of music as a healing and, ex and opening um, experience? So thanks all. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, you bet, George.